you know, I could also figure out the angular velocity if I wanted. I know it's, the period is 0.25 seconds, so I know it's going through one revolution every quarter seconds, or two pi radians every 0.25 seconds. You could figure that out if you wanted, but that would be about 25 radians per second, I think. Let's see. Yeah. I've got to better do this off to the side here, just to make sure this is not on the problem, but if I told it to you, I'm going to make sure. Omega equals theta over t, which is the period, 2 pi radians, because it went in one revolution, divided by time of 0.25 seconds. So that's uh, 8 times pi, pretty much about 25, about 25 radians per second. Okay. So it's just another way to do it, and then you could use centripetal acceleration is omega squared r. But we got velocity, so let's stick with that. B. What's the centripetal acceleration? Centripetal acceleration, if we're using a velocity, we use this equation, v squared over the radius. That's 12.6 meters per second, but it's squared divided by the radius, which is about a half of a meter. So that's going to be around, uh, let's see, around 300. And that's, that's going to be meters squared per second squared divided by meters. So one of the meters will cancel out. I'll have meters per second squared. I'll show that. Let's see, 12.6 times 12.6 divided by 0.25 equals, whoop, I was off by a factor of 2. Let's see, 150, 300. Let me try that again. 12.6 times 12.6 equals 158 divided by 0.5 equals, that's better, 318. When you do a problem, look at the numbers. Don't just trust the calculator. Make sure the numbers make sense with what you see. Now, like I said, this is right here. That's meters squared per second squared. And in the bottom, I got meters here. So one of those meters will cancel. I get meters per second squared. That's an acceleration. Good, so that's right. Now finally, let's figure out what the centripetal force is. Let's see. Well, the centripetal force is going to be equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration which in this case is 0 0.020 kilograms times 318 meters per second squared. And that's going to be 6.36, I believe. You check and make sure that's right. That's kilogram. meters per second squared. And a kilogram meter per second squared, that's a newton. So this is 6.36 newtons. I want to talk about one more piece in this. Um, I want to talk about orbits. So I'm going to get rid of this. I can swing something overhead, a uh, 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 stopper attached to a string, and centripetal force uh, is going to be due to the tension in the string. This, the object will want to move in a straight line, but I keep pulling it back. Now, for an object in orbit, the centripetal force is produced by gravity. So if I've got an object orbiting the Earth, the space station, for example, or the moon, what it's doing is it's balancing its centripetal force. Mass times excel centripetal acceleration is equal to gravitational force. So I should say the centripetal force is just balanced by the gravitational force. If you do that, if you balance centripetal force and gravitational force, you produce a stable orbit. And what's happening is it's falling. The object's falling. As it's here, it's falling towards the Earth, but it's got this side speed, this velocity. By the time it gets down to the surface of the Earth, it's over here, so it missed. 
By the time it gets down this far to where it would fall, it's over here. It keeps missing. It's going just fast enough. So the object that, there's my space shuttle. The force that keeps the space shuttle in motion about the Earth is gravity. And it's a balance of gravity and centripetal force. And it's directed, just like any centripetal force or gravity, towards the center of the Earth in this case. Now the moon's farther out and so it takes longer to get around. Oh, I should show you that. You won't have this, you won't need this for the test. This is just a little extra. I showed you at the beginning, let's see, we know that mass times centripetal acceleration, that's mass times v squared over r. Well, gravitational force, in the beginning of the book you can see it's something called uh, Newton's, the universal gravitational constant, times the mass of the big object, in this case it would be the Earth, the big mass, times the mass of the object in orbit, divided by the radius squared of the orbit. See, you can get rid of some things here. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter the size of the mass that's in orbit. Just like two different objects, when they fall, they fall at the same acceleration. When you're in orbit, it doesn't matter what your mass is as far as setting up the orbit. The conditions are the same because the masses cancel out. I can get rid of one of these radiuses, and I wind up with the velocity squared it is equal to two things that aren't going to change. It's gravitational constant in the mass divided by the radius. Now, the velocity, we already talked about that. It's, you know, you can say it's 2 pi r, the distance around, divided by the time for one orbit. And you can cut this down to where it really talks about the difference in period between the period of the orbit and the radius. And what you find out is, as you move further and further away from the Earth, the period of the orbit increases. Whereas the shuttle has about a 90 minute orbit, it takes 90 minutes to go around the Earth once, the Moon takes 30 days. And somewhere in between there is geostationary orbit, which is 24 hours. And that's where the satellites park that uh, do weather and communication, so they can just sit out there looking at the same piece of the Earth. So that's another chunk of centripetal acceleration and centripetal force.